All right, Boker Tov. Good hour of Pesach. Don't forget to do your beer chametz um, and your beat and your bittel. Um, today's daf is membet, and extremely appropriately. Oh, can you get that? The, 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 oh, it's open. Oh, hi. And extremely appropriately, the daf is um, fo- is dealing with the issue of shlichut, and one of the main sources of shlichut is the idea of shechting the korban pesach, which was done today. So um, we have three sources of shlichut. One is truma. Uh, Gamatem, even you, which includes a shaliach. One is kiddushin, a gerushin, v'shalach, v'shilchami beto, literally send her driver out of the house, but understood to mean he can make a shaliach. And one is korban pesach, because it says v'shachatuato kol kahaladat yisrael, which means is interpreted to mean every individual is obligated. And even though every individual was obligated, we know that every individual did not shecht it. One person shechted from his family. The Gemara quoted a bright about losing the korban pesach. But that really wasn't even Mishnah uh, necessary because, I mean, excuse me, a Mishnah, but that wasn't even necessary. It's really just understood from the case itself that would not, that one person shechs for the group, um, even though from the Pasuk with Shachatu Koladat Israel, it sounds like each person is obligated. So all of those show you an idea of Shalichut. And the Gemara said you really could have learned it out from two of them from Kudchim, from the Korban Pesach, and from uh, Kiddushin and Gerushin. Uh, because um, you can't just learn Kiddush and Gerushin, you wouldn't have known things that are Kodesh. Um, so, but you couldn't just have learned from the Korban Pesach because uh, that's done the Machshava. You can sanct- sanctify things just by thought. Um, so therefore, but by taking those two extremes, you include everything in the middle, all right? So the Gemara wants to know why you need the Pesach by Truma. And that's where we pick up on Mem Alev Amud Bet. So the Gemara says like this. Um, uh, okay, it says... Um, uh, the, um, right, the Ela Atem, line starts with the word Atem, about, uh, I don't know, 20, about two, two thirds of the way down. So, the, why do you need then the Pasuk Atem, even you, you, even you, by Truma, which seems to include a Shaliach, if we can learn Shaliach from these other two sources? So, the Gemara says, you need it like the teaching of Rabbi Yanai. Gam Rebbe Yanai, Gam Atem, even you, what does that teach? Ma, not to include a shaliach, we start with knowing a shaliach works, and it's to define the parameters of a shaliach. Gam Atem, even your shaliach has to be like you. What does that mean, like you? Ma Atem b'nei bris, afshulchachem b'nei bris. The same way your shaliach is part of the covenant, is a Jew, you're, you are a Jew, your shaliach has to be part of the covenant. So therefore, you cannot make a non-Jew as your shaliach. Okay, so the, it, it's coming to teach you not the idea of shlichos, but parameters of shlichos. It has to be in, similar to you. Um, so the says, Ha, Lamali Kra, why do I need a Pasuk? I could learn, know it misvara, but Rabbi Chia Barab, I'm Rabbi Yochanan Afka. I could know it from Rabbi Chia Barab in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. I'm Rabbi Chia Barab and Rabbi Yochanan. Eina Eved Nasser Shaliach, the Kabbal get me out by Allah Shal Isha. Um, a, a, a slave cannot be a Shaliach to accept a get for on behalf of a woman from her husband. Because marriage does not apply to him. Slaves, the, the halacha does not recognize marriage and divorce by slaves. Um, and therefore, says the uh, Gemara here, that, um, that uh, what do you call it? Says the Gemara, that uh, we know that he could not be a shaliyah, because he's not bitorat. If the laws don't apply to you of a certain category, you cannot serve as an agent for a whole category of laws that are irrelevant to you. Okay, so therefore, even though an Evet is considered B'nai Brit, an Evet is in the covenant, an Evet is partially obligated in mitzvot. So I can make an Evet to be my shaliach to take trumos and masros, because an Evet isn't allowed to eat tevo. And I could make an Evet my shaliach to purchase something for me or sell something for me. But he can't be a shaliach in an area of law that doesn't apply to him, in the area of Gitan and Kiddushin. Okay, so the Gemara says, if I know that trust me, Svara, that you have to be in the same category of law, why do I need a Pusik to exclude a non Jew from Truma? Won't a non Jew obviously be excluded from Truma because a non Jew doesn't take Truma? So obviously he can't be a Shaliyah. Why would I need a Pusik? So the Gemara says, um, the Gemara says, where it's I need the Pusik. Sagadai to Kamina, I would have thought, Eved the Lavbar had Tehu Klau. Um, uh, the, an Evet is not in the category of being pay, made, permitted by a get. Gidden and Kiddushin don't apply to whatever, but he's categorically excluded. So there I know that even though he's in the category of B'nai Brit, 
he's excluded. You see, here's the organization B'nai Bris. Anyway, he's excluded from, because he's not B'Torah. He's not, those halachas don't apply to him. Okay, but I might have thought the opposite by a non-Jew when it comes to taking Truma. Aval Ove Kuchavim, a non-Jew, Hovi Isa B'Truma Dinavshe, a non-Jew can take Truma for himself in, in his own grain. Now I'm taught in the Mishnah. If a non-Jew or Samaritan takes Truma, it's valid. Okay, Rashi says some of this has to do with the question of when a non-Jew owns land in the land of Israel, does it change the status of the land? Um, this would have to assume it doesn't change the status of the land. When a non-Jew, you know, sort of uh, smooths out the grain and processes the grain, does that make it exempt? All of this assumes that the non-Jew's ownership and processing does not exempt the grain. And then the non and so, but if you take those assumptions, then a non-Jew actually can separate truma because if, if like the jew grew it and the non-jew bought it other types of scenarios a non-jew taking truma actually is that is valid okay and the truma has a status of truma so therefore i might think maybe you can be a shaliach for taking your truma to mash Milan, that he can't okay so the point is you know you could have said another thing how about just a shaliach in a non-ritual matter how about a shaliach to buy and sell stuff for me Right, the Torah halacha recognizes ownership, but you know, and buying and selling of non-Jews. So there's really two separate categories, and a shaliach has to be both. Number one is he has to be Jewish, even if the area of law applies to him. So truma, buying and selling, those types of things that applies to non-Jews. Nevertheless, he can't be my shaliach because he's not Jewish or he's not bnei bris. Okay. Number two is even if he is bnei bris, obligated in mitzvahs, he can't be a shaliach if he's excluded categorically from this system of laws. And therefore, an evet, although he's obligated in mitzvahs, can't be a shaliach for gittim and kiddushim. Okay. But that's what you learn out from God. bnei bris. You know logically that the area of laws has to apply, and from gamatem you learn out that a shaliach has to be Jewish. Yes. Uh, Stansos uses nachri rather than goy. Yeah. Unusual. Uh, really? That's uh, oh, you mean as you know? You mean I, I don't know. I can't. You, he usually changes references. Oh, we go him to goy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just the original mission. Anyway, okay. Now, the mice says like this. Well, Reb Shimon the Potter, but according to Reb Shimon, that says that when a non-Jew takes truma, it does not have the status of truma. Now we talk in the Mishnah. Truma sovit luchavim midamaa. A truma of a non-Jew that a non-Jew separated causes dimua. If it gets mixed up with other grain, it makes the rest of the grain, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, only edible by a kohen. It's seen as a mixture of truma and non-truma. The chayavin alechomesh, and if you were to eat it or whatever, you would have to pay it back with an extra fifth. So, meaning the truma of a non-Jew has a real status of truma. Okay, that's the Tanakhama. That's what we've been saying. Reb Shimon Poter, Reb Shimon exempts. He says if a non-Jew takes truma, it does not have a status of truma. It only can be separated by a Jew. So according to him, atem gamatem lauli. When would you ever need to have this halacha that a shaliach can only be Jewish? Because there's never an area where a non-Jew is in the category of uh, of law that you would need to exclude him by virtue of him being a non-Jew. So the Gemara says. Um, again, I don't know why, thank you. Right? Says, I don't know why you can't just say, what do you call it? Like an area of Mecca, you know, buying and selling. But anyway, the Gemara says, no, um, it's true. I need this halacha to exclude, I need the Gamatem to tell me the following thing. Sagadai Ramina, I would have thought to say, Hovamar, Atem below Arisim, Atem below Shutafin, Atem below Apitropis. So Atem the word Atem, before you get to the Gam, the Gam includes a Shaliach, but the word Atem is a more limiting word. So the word Atem limits that there are certain people that cannot take Truma, who aren't you and aren't your agent, who's not me and not my agent. And nevertheless, you know, it's like that wise man of Chelm joke, right? <laughs> Anyway, it's a story. This guy goes to here, you know, and tells somebody tell a riddle. You know, Chaim tells a riddle and says, "Okay, who is it that is like, you know, that's my father's son, but not my brother?" So he says, "Me." So he's he's brilliant. So he goes back and he says, "Okay, I have a riddle. Who is it that's my father's son and not my brother?" So nobody in the knows. He says, "It's Chaim Yanko." Okay, so (laughs) anyway. Okay, anyway, so <laughs> who is it? Sorry. First time they got such a laugh. Okay, anyway. Who is okay, who is it? Who is it that's not me and not my Shaliach that I might think might still be able to take truma that the Pusik has to exclude? So I tend to say it only is you and God is your Shaliach, but still, but not somebody who's not you and not your Shaliach. Who is that person? So it says, Atem. The lower resim, not your sharecropper, 
okay? Maybe he can take on his portion. He can't take on your portion. Lo Shutafi, not a partner. Again, can take on his portion, not yours. A Tembo Apitropis, not a, uh, not somebody who's like, who's, uh, who's an overseer, you know, for like, for like, uh, for like, uh, what do you call it? For like, um, uh, 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 orphans or something. Okay. Now that's interesting because Apotropus sometimes is invested with the power of a Shaliyah, but, but nevertheless, a Tembelo Hatorimus Chain Hoshalo, which is Tom. Somebody is taking stuff that uh, isn't his. Any of these cases, right, that if you, it has to be either you or your Shaliyah. So a Tem is coming to exclude people that are connected to you. So I might have thought, I might have thought if you're excluding those people, maybe you would exclude a shaliach as well, Nami, Kamash Milan, that we're not excluding a shaliach. So again, the question is, you could learn out shlichas from Korban Pesach and from Gerashim. Ge- Why do you need Gamatem to include a shaliach by Truma? And so there are two answers. The first answer was, it's not to include a shaliach. It's to tell you if you're going to have a shaliach, the shaliach has to be like you. The shaliach has to be um, has to be Jewish, okay? Um, and answer number two is you might have thought to exclude shaliach because of the emphasis of atem. So Gam is telling you that a shaliach works here as well, mm-hmm. okay? So the Gemara says like this: That's good for Rabbi Yoshev Bar Karcha that uses it to learn out. Um, all those laws about, according to Rabbi Yochanan, that I'm sorry, that's according to Rabbi Yosher ben Karcha, excuse me, that um, that uh, that look, you, lose, uses the pasuk by Korban Pesach, right, to tell me that uh, that one person can represent the group and there could be a shaliach by Korban Pesach, okay. But according to Rabbi Yochanan, that uses the pasuk of um, Korban Pesach. Uh, to tell me a different law, Minalan, where do I know where do I know that there could be an idea of Shlichos because I I won't know it from Korban Pesach. The Tanya, we turn in the Brisa. Reb Yonas and Omir, Minayin Shikon Yisrael Kula and Yosim Bepesach Echad. How do I know that in theory all, all the Jewish people can have one Korban Pesach? Sort of like, you know, sometimes we have the same idea by, uh, there's a similar Gemara about a sukkah, right? And it's used to prove yeah, the idea that people. you can be Yotze with a borrowed sukkah. Because they, because they learned from a pasuk that all the Jewish people could sit in one sukkah, so it can't be possible that, that there's a everybody has an ownership of that sukkah that's worth a pruta, of the way Rashi says it. So it proves to you that you can be yote in a borrowed sukkah. Mm-hmm. So there's a similar argument here. How do you know everybody could be yote with one korban pesach? The problem is if everybody's yote with one korban pesach, unless it's a sheet the size of the Livyosan or something, <laughs> right? <laughs> Talking about sukkahs, yes, um, yeah, not, yeah. It, not everybody, not everybody will get a kazayis. Kaza- yeah. So the, he's using this to prove, Rabbi Yonatan uses this to prove that a Korban Pesach, you don't have to eat it to be Yotze. Now that's normally not the, not the approach. The normal approach is, is if that you're not able to eat a Kezayis, you're not Yotze. Because as distinct from all other Korbanot, all other Korbanot are brought for the sake of offering them up on the Mizbeach. The eating is just like a <laughs> derivative type of a purpose. For the rest of the whole reason it's brought is in order to eat it that night. And here's an interesting way that you, you can see that. If it's a broad betuma, most of Klai Yisrael is Tmei Meis or whatever, and you're going to bring a Korban Pesach betuma, welcome, welcome, then what, what, would, you, what would you eat at betuma? So the normal halacha is, is that when um, another korban is brought betuma, okay, it would not be eaten betuma because basically the, the tumah is only overridden for the sake of, of doing what's necessary to be done with the korban. So you would bring it betuma, but you wouldn't, wouldn't eat it with tumah. The one exception is korban pesach. Korban pesach, if it's brought betuma, is eaten betuma because its whole purpose is to be eaten. Okay, so Reb, Reb, that's the normal approach. But Rabbi Yonasan disagreed. And he says, in theory, there could be one little sheep for all of Klai Yisrael, okay? And therefore, you don't have to eat a kezayis to the yotze your korban pesach. So, minayin, minayin shekoi yisrael yotze bepesach, kulan yotze bepesach, echa top of membedam and aleph, okay? Shenemar, the pasuk says, v'shachatu ato kokal adat yisrael bein arbayim. They should all shecht it. Ki kokal kulam shochtim, do they all shecht it? El v'lo, ena shochet el achad, one person. El amikam shekoi yisrael yotze bepesach echad. You see that everybody is yotze with one korban pesach. So for him, it proves that you have to, that you don't need a kezayis for every individual. But, says the Gemara, if that's what you're using the Pasuk to prove, you don't have the concept of Shlichus by Korban Pesach. 
Okay, so shaliach because she be nale. Now you could say, well, we know it by truma, we know it by gitin, but as the gemara says, kachim a korban is the highest level, is the most strict. So if you don't have it by korban pesach, how do you know that there's an idea of shlichut of agency that applies to korbanot? So the gemara says the deal. The gemara says minale. It says mine. You learn it from that case itself, meaning even if the point of the pesach is to tell you that you don't need to eat a kezayis to be yotze the korban pesach. It describes a scenario where all of Israel own one little sheep and one person is shechting it. So that's shwichus. One person is shechting it for everybody. So you don't need to say the purpose of the pasuk is to teach you that. Still, that's the scenario it's describing. So that teaches you the concept of shwichus. So the verse says, no. The deal Mashani has something to say, should just be You can't learn from that. If everybody is co owners of the Korban Pesach, then, because of their direct connection to the korban, one of the owners can shecht it on behalf of everybody else. But everybody has already something that very concretely makes them all part of the same enterprise and makes this person representing the group because they're all partners in that group. That's very different than if you're unrelated to me, we have no shared interests or whatever. And I just say, hey, you be my shaliach, you go and do so. So, so of course, the Kohen Gadol and Yom Kippur is a bad example because it's a Kohen Gadol. It's a specific um, when, it, well, no, because again, as I've been saying, the reason we don't bring the proof from just Kachim, from Kachim in general, what Kohanim do stuff for us. I mean, the Gemara asks the question, is Kohanim shlucha de Rahman or shlucha de Dan? But there's no proof by the things that the Kohen does that we are supposed to be doing it. Maybe what the Torah is saying is, your job is to bring wow. it to the Kohanim. The Kohanim's job is to uh, sprinkle it and do what he does. Where do you see that? He's your agent, right? You do your job, he does his job. But by Korban Pesach, it says, you're supposed to shecht it, right? Mishchu kechul lachem celebrate tavot, right? V'shachatu otel, well, that's kokal on Israel. But you're supposed to shecht it, and you're not shechting it. One person is shechting it for the group. So that's a chiddush of shaliyah. But the Gemara says, but maybe you can't generalize from that. Because maybe there, he's not just a random person who's your agent. You all are part of the same enterprise. You all have a financial investment in this sheep, an ownership of this sheep. So of course he can represent the group. That doesn't prove normal shlichut. So I just want to say two things about this. First of all, okay, so, um, you know, Tosa says the obvious question. Why did the Gemara ask us on the previous staff where it used the example of Korban Pesach? Right there, it was happy that Korban Pesach, the idea of one person shechting was a, a proof of agency. Why here does it say, oh, maybe it's different because of ownership? So Tosa says, no, because in the previous staff, we weren't saying that all of Israel owned one Korban. We were saying one person shechs for all of Israel. What does that mean? It means all everybody brings their korban, every group brings their korban, and you've got one person shechting for every group. You bring your korban, I'll shecht it. You bring your korban, I'll shecht it. So in that case, if you describe the scenario of of one person shecht for everybody means I well, there's one designated shechter for every group that brings the korban pesach. That proves an idea of shlichus of agency, even when you don't have a financial ownership. Right, a financial stake. Whereas here we're saying kol Yisrael means they all own the same sheep. If they all own the same sheep, it's not such a big chiddush of shlichus because they're all part owners. So of course, you can represent the group. So the other thing I want to say about this is that this idea about the different way of thinking about what agency is. You know, I think I've mentioned this multiple times before. The Rav speaks about this a great deal in two scenarios in halacha. The most, well, the biggest example is Tefillah B'Tzibor, but he also talks about it by Zimun, where he says, you know, by those places, it's not like, we, you know, although the guy is actually called Shaliach Tzibor. By the way, here's an interesting little, a fun fact, as my kids would say. The only place in all of the Mishnah where it says, Shlucho Shel Adam Kemoto, a person's agent is like him, is a Mishnah in Brachos talking about a Shaliach Tzibor. So, so it's interesting thinking about the shaliach tzibor and models of agency. So the problem is with a shaliach tzibor is that the Gemara says that you have to pray for yourself. You can't have somebody else pray for you. Like, let's say I'm, you're just davening. You go to another person and just say, you just say your Shimon Esri. I'll stand here and listen and say, Amen. Are you Yotze? So according to, uh, you know, many Shitot, the answer is no, you're not. You have to daven for yourself. So what, how does the whole institution of Shaliach Tzibur work, mm -hmm. which is for people who didn't know how to daven and for the illiterate? How were they Yotze? So the Rav said, no, no. There, what's happening is not that 
he is he is um, sort of um, uh, you know ex discharging for you your personal obligation, and that he is your personal agent, and his tefillah is your tefillah. That's not what's happening. What's happening is you have the entire sort of con community, right, as a corporate entity, and it is the tefillah of the tzibur. It's not the tefillah of every individual. It is the tefillah of the entire tzibur as one communal entity, and, and whatever. And that entity is <laughs> represented by the shaliach. He is the mouthpiece for that communal entity, but he's not the individual representative of each individual. He says that's the difference of your silent Shimon Esri and your petition of Shimon Esri. Your silent Shimon Esri is tefillah bitzibor. You're praying as an individual in the presence of a tzibor. The, um, the repetition of the Shimon Esri is tefillah hatzibor. You're no longer praying as an individual. The entire community as one unit is praying to God through the mouthpiece of the Shaliyah Tzibor. So that, by the way, is an interesting sort of model you see is the Gemara's point of Isle Shutfis Begavayim. If we all own the, this sheet, and that's all Apostle Pali shot of the Torah that celebrate the vote, that there's one household that owns the sheep. So when this one guy shechs, who has to see him as he's doing my obligation, I'm really supposed to be the one that's shechs. No, you're all one unit, one household. Everybody has shared ownership of the sheep. And one person, you know, represents the shechita of the entire unit as a unit. Okay, and that's what the Gemara says. That's very different than when there's no shared ownership and so on, and you're just having a person who's representing you individually. Okay, so you cannot learn out from Korban Pesach. So the Gemara says like this, Elamehacha, rather from here. V'chulem ish celebrate the vote celebrate Okay, so now not about the shafting of the Korban Pesach, but the purchasing of the Korban Pesach, that one person should take it. So presumably he's taking it in, on behalf of everyone. Um, so the and before it's taken, they don't yet have a joint ownership, right? The joint ownership only comes after it's purchased on behalf of everyone. Okay, so he takes it for everyone, so he's their shaliach. So the Gemara says, no. Presumably he's saying, yeah, but you know, nevertheless, that's part of, of creating the sense. Maybe they all gave him the money to purchase it. It's all in the end of the day. They're all going to be shared owner of it. At the end of the day, they're part of the same enterprise. And that's very different than I take a random person and say, here, here's a get, go divorce my wife. Right? There's nothing that brings us together and that makes that us sort of, you know, he, him as a representative of the whole. Here there's a group and he's a representative of the group. Okay, so the Gemara says, so we still don't know where you have an idea of agency by Kachim. So the Gemara says, no, in can trey cry lamely. No, you're right. But then you wouldn't need two psukim. You wouldn't need one pasuk that describes shechting on behalf of the group and one pasuk that describes purchasing on behalf of the group. You wouldn't have to say it twice. Mm -hmm. So if, by saying it twice, if you don't need it to tell you there's an idea of agency when somebody has a sort of already a connection to what's going on, the extra time, once it says by shechting, once by purchasing, at least one of those should be used. It's extra to teach you that you can be an agent even when you have no direct connection to what's going on. So the says, no, you can, sorry, can't use it for that. We need the idea of purchasing the Pesach to tell me something else. The Gemara says, um, uh, You need for a Yitzchak. No, it's like, Only a man can purchase. A minor is not yet able to take possession of something in general, not just by Korban Pesach. So that's what the Pasuk is telling me, not the idea that somebody does it on behalf of others. Right, right. Do one minute. So the Mar says, no. Who may ish lefiach lo nafka? That we can learn out from ish lefiach lo. Each person, each man, according to their the ability to be able to eat, and not a minor, because a minor does not have a shared ownership, because a minor cannot take possession and be an owner. Okay, so we already know from another ish that it can't be a minor. So what do you need the Pasuk to say? One person takes on behalf of everyone. You don't need to exclude a minor. What that's doing is it's extra and telling you this idea of agency. Yes. Well, wait a minute. Let's just also point out another interesting thing about Tosfos. Tosfos says, If you look at Tosfos, it says, Why need the Pasuk? In general, I know. That a minor does not cannot you know does not have cannot take possession of things. Why do I need a pasuk here by Korban Pesach to tell it to me? No, because by Pesach I might have thought it was different. 
Tzarech Limanot Alav, that a cotton can eat from the Korban Pesach. Okay, if a car, if a cotton wants to participate in the Korban Pesach, interesting, right? Like I said, perfect stuff for today. Shechti yeah. Korban Pesach, we're done today. Eating, you know, tonight is the Seder, where obviously a major center is the mind, is the children, the Ketanim, okay? And they actually could be part of eating the Korban Pesach. They would have to be, participate in the group. They would have to say, sign me up. I'm, I'm going to sign up for this group. Limanot alav. Okay, they would have to be counted as part of the group. So, and if you're not part of the group, you can't eat, whether you're an adult or a minor. Okay, but minors would be able to eat if they would sign up to be part of the group. Okay, the chsiv celebrate a vote. So, a filu katan, lebayit, excuse me, a household, including a minor. Ema aflachem zacha, kamash mulan. So, I might think that, you know, that if a minor, therefore, can be part of the Korban Pesach, can eat if he signs up to the group. So, then maybe by Korban Pesach, I can't be zocha for a katan. So what you would say, well, what difference does it make? If you can be part of the group without owning it, why would it matter? Because, well, I don't know. Let's say a minor asks me to go purchase a Korban Pesach for the minor's group. Not for, you know, he's not part of my group, right? So anyway, I'm, I'm not able to do that. So what it, so it's interesting, A, I guess, you know, because it's a, the stum interesting that even though a minor doesn't have ownership, he can still be part of the Korban Pesach if he signs up to the group and he can actually eat from the Korban Pesach. Again, you know, interesting if you think about just the idea of, you know, the focus on minors and the Seder and so on. Okay, but nevertheless, he cannot be Zoha. Okay, I can't take possession of something for a minor, and that's what I learned out from the Pasuk of, um, you know, or he can't be Zoha, excuse me, I think I did it in the reverse way. I'm sorry, no, I did the reverse way, excuse me. It's Ish, Vichulam Ish, he cannot take possession for others. I'm sorry, I reversed it. Okay, so he can be part of another person's Korban Petzach, but he cannot take possession for others, and that's what I learned out from the Pasuk of Ish. Yes, you got a question. So before the Gemara says, Ahu may Ish be your clone after. Yeah. What, why is this? On what basis does the stam privilege the the limud of ish zocher below katan zocher rather than use that original pasuk for shlichus? Because it's the only argument that you could use it for shlichus was that you were saying that it was superfluous. But if I can show you it's not superfluous, you have no argument. Because the simple sense of the Pasuk does not tell you shlichos, because as the Gemar said, it's a special case. It's a case where you have a shaychos, where you are connected. How do you use a, that Pasuk to teach me shlichos for a case where you're uh, not so connected? In these, so so you, in that general logic of, no, you can't use the Pasuk for this, it's really used for that, often the privileged limud is more direct and not simply right. a the limud, yeah, Right. If the, if the pshat of the Pesach would have been shlichos, the Gemara wouldn't have disqualified it because there's another drusha there. But the pshat of the Pesach doesn't tell you general shlichos because it's a special case here because mm-hmm. you're, you have an ownership. Mm-hmm. So therefore, the only basis to use it for general shlichos mm-hmm. is that it's superfluous. Right. But it's not superfluous because it's telling me something of pshat. Okay, so from each lefiach lo, I learned from the idea, yeah, just, just repeat because I, I said it wrong the first time. But each of I learned the idea that a katan can take, um, only only an adult can take possession of the Pesach for others. A katan cannot take possession of the Pesach for others. As Tosa says, although a katan can be part of the Pesach that an adult took and sign up for it, but the only an adult can take the Pesach on behalf of others. Okay, but nevertheless, and that I learned from each of So So if you have each celebrate a vote, is seen as superfluous, and because that's superfluous, that teaches me the idea of shlichus by Korban Pesach, even in a case, or by Kachim, even in a case <laughs> when somebody does not have joint ownership, or it's not directly connected. Okay, so now the Gemara continues like this. Now, okay, so now we're done for now. We, we basically have, what are our limudim, okay? We have Korp... How do these things die, right away? Okay, we have Korban Pesach, okay, and we have, what do you call it? We've got uh, Gerushin, and we also learned out Kiddushin, okay? There we said, we, there we learned out, this is from Bishilcha, and this is from, uh, what do you call it? The Shachatu Otau, or it's learned out from Abi Chulahem Ish. Basically, the idea of one person is shechting and one person is purchasing. Those two tell you the idea of shlichos. They're not, they don't, they're not limited because they cover separate areas. This covers kudshim, right? And this covers chulin. This what happened ha- to your Venn diagram? I, well, this, but this is where they're not intersecting. It's the truma. That's, that's that right, that's right. Truma is the thing that intersects because truma has an element of kudshim here. Yep. Okay, anyway, whatever. 
but true. But the point is, so you can't learn out from truma because it intersects. But you can learn out from these because they don't intersect. Okay, this is masa. This is machshava. Okay. Anyway, this is rov masa and the shaliach. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So anyway. These are things that they have that the other one don't have, so can't be because of any unique shared characteristics. So this tells you it's the whole world that there's this idea of shlichut. Okay, we learn it out from those two things. From truma, gamatem, where do we learn out from? Either from the atem part, we learn out that it has to be like you, so a shaliach has to be a Jew, okay? We know he has to be the Torah, the laws have to apply to him, but there are cases where the laws might apply to him even if he's uh, even if he's not Jewish. So Atem tells you a shaliach has to be a Jew. And Gam tells you that there is a shaliach because you shouldn't come to say that maybe it has to, since Atem says, you know, not sharecroppers, etc. Right? It has to be you and not sharecroppers, etc. So therefore, I might say maybe a shaliach doesn't work. So Gam tells you, no, no, a shaliach works here as well. But basically... The general set of shlichos I learn from these two, okay? Can you learn it out from just shechting Korban Pesach? No, maybe this is special, shechting and purchasing the Korban Pesach in general, because there everybody is joint owners. That doesn't tell you a general idea of having a stranger as my shaliach. And joint owners, as I say, creates a sense of like a corporate identity, a unit that one person represents the group. It's very different than an idea of a personal agent and a shaliach that is not really deeply connected to me. Okay, so that's why I needed to sort of use an extra puzzle to expand that beyond a case of joint ownership. All this is okay. Shlichut be Isura, not for Mamona? No, well, we, I mean, we haven't done Mamona, it's a good point. Um, and, you know, I've sort of been assuming that that's been included, um, but... Um, so you know, last time, Matan, you can't have a non-Jew be your um, Well, that's true. The exclusion of non-Jews includes includes the name Mamonis as well. But, uh, but it is true that so far, the areas that Gemara have been looking at are more like Isser Vehefter areas than, than Mominus. Let's take a look, because we're about to turn to the Mominus mission. Okay, so the Gemara says like this, all right? Um, uh, okay. Velahadam of Gidol Amarav, Minayin Shishulcha Shalom Kamoso, Yishenem Rav, Nasiyachad Nasiyachad Mimateh, that here you learn out by the division of the land of Israel, that it says, there was one prince from each tribe, and that prince made the, you know, was sort of part of the division, and maybe, you know, represented the entire tribe in whatever negotiations there had to be about how you divided, although it, in the end it gets done, you know, through the last lots and the Urim Vitumim and other types of ways. But nevertheless, to the degree you needed the person to participate, he was represented by the Nasi. Okay? So the Gemara says, um, Why do you learn out from that Pasuk? Why not learn that from all these places? So you see the Gemara is assuming that the discussion of shlichus relates to the whole range, including Dine Mominus. Okay, so the Gemara says, no, for Tisbra, wait, do you really think that makes sense? That that Pasuk there by the division of Israel is really the basis for shlichus? Ta shlichus who? Is that, you think that's really shlichus? Faktani mu'abine shlichus ninu. There were minors, right, that were part of, you know, they were like, yeah, the whole age range is represented in the division of the land, and they can't have an agent work for them. Ella, that, that a minor cannot have an agent yeah. for so are unborn children. They're also we're going to get to unborn minors. children. Okay. So what's your but what's your question? So right? Why you, why do you say the minors are included in the in, in this? Uh, How do you know they were included in the division of the yeah. land? Because they were. Because let's imagine that you had I don't know. Let's say let's say some kids were orphaned <laughs> and they were, right the father had died and uh, they, they 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 get on their own behalf a portion of the land at the time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, what do you, I mean, what do you think? They'd be landless? I mean, right? Everybody. <laughs> okay, that's taken uh, so for granted. Question. All right. Um, Ella. Uh, How do you know that you can take possession of something for a person on their behalf, in, not in their presence? It's here, they are taking possession for all everybody's portion for their behalf, but that's not necessarily an idea of shlichus. And that's interesting, because there's other Gemaras that discuss whether Zechi is mitam shlichus or not mitam shlichus, okay? This Gemara is sort of saying, well, Zechi can't be based on shlichus, because then it wouldn't work for a minor. And we start with a, pres a presumption that you cannot be the agent and the representative of a minor. So, But you can take possession 
of something for somebody, either not in their presence, and not only that, even if they are a minor. It's, a minor is considered not in their presence, meaning if it's just that I could take possession of something for you, not in your presence when it's on your behalf, we could say that's a shlichus, but you are presumed to want me to be your shaliach because it's all for your benefit, even though you're, it's not in your presence. But when it's a minor, you can't be, your, the minor is presumed to make this person a shaliach, Fundamentally, there's no shlichus by minors. And therefore, this shows that Zachin, or at least should show that Zachin is not based on the idea of shlichus. Even in Basically, Giyur, even in Giyur, Yeah, I'm not talking about you. Anyway, but it just is basically the principle that you can do something, you know, you can take possession of something for somebody or act on behalf of somebody in their behalf, not separate from an idea of being seen as a representative of, their, of that person. So anyway, so that's what we learn out from this. And it is not teaching you a general idea of shlichus. It's teaching you an idea of zachin, which in one way is more limited. It's only when something is black and white to somebody's in somebody's benefit. But on the other hand, it's more expansive. You don't need to be appointed, and you can do it even for a minor. That's what we learn out here, but not a general idea of shlichus. Okay? So the Gemara says, shenem, okay. So the Gemara says, v'tisbara, one minute. Does that make sense? That that's considered zachin, which I just described as black and white for somebody's benefit? Zuchusulo, he, how do you know that that's the person's benefit? Maybe when that Nasi took possession for the miners that were part of his tribe, maybe it was to their detriment. He's going to divide up, you know, which section everybody gets. And maybe these miners would have rather have had, you know, the, uh, the the mountain. And those miners would have rather have had the valley. So, you know, it's not just... Otherwise, you would have got nothing. Now you're getting something. You're determining which portion I'm getting. So that's not all black and white in my benefit. There's a lot of judgment there. Okay, so why can you do that on behalf of the minors? So that's not a normal zachin. So the Mar says, the elokin rabba barafuna. barafuna, marav gidol, marav. You're right. It doesn't teach you a general principle of zachin. A general principle of zachin you wouldn't learn from there. That has to be a special case. Because that's a place where there's actually trade-offs and it's not all black and white. So if that's true, if that's not the general principle of Zachin, what principle is it? So it's the following principle. How do you know when orphans, presumably minors, are coming to divide their father's estate? That the basin can appoint a uh, a, a, a a guardian, right, or you know some type of a court-appointed um, overseer in order to... Um, to, to, for their detriment and for their benefit. So the Gemara just interrupts for a minute. The Gemara says, well, ho, why, would they apply, why would they appoint a guardian for their detriment? No, no, no. What it means is, el not least coast. That for the purpose of benefiting them, they're going to appoint somebody that's going to be authorized, even if it leads to some negatives. Okay? Now, there are different scenarios of negatives. One negative is like the person actually made a mistake. Okay, we're going to get to something like that in a minute. But another scenario of a negative is, I'm sorry, this was the judgment I made, that this field would be good for you, even though it meant giving up that field. And you can't come and complain, oh, well, I never would have wanted to have lost that. My whole job was to make judgment calls and to make trade-offs, meaning Lachov and these codes means to make the types of trade-offs that are necessary to get to some fair distribution. So how do you know? Which is exactly our question. It's not classic Zachin. Classic Zachin is, here's a present for somebody. Great, I'll take possession of it. It's all good. Okay, here it's trade-offs. How do you know that in the special case of orphans coming to divide their father's estate, minors, that you can actually appoint somebody to make the division with the trade-offs that it's part is part of that process? Talmud Lamar, that's what you had by the division of the land of Israel. Okay, so that is not a number one general shlichus, because it's ketanim. It's not a general zochin because there are trade-offs. It's a special authority that is given by, now what's special about it? What allows that case to be special? Is it because it's about like some type of a division of some inheritance? Is that makes it special? Because that's obviously a similar idea to the, what happened in Eretz Yisrael, right? This was sort of the tribe's nachala. We were all inheriting it and now we had to divide it. Is that what made it special? Or is what made it special that allowed you to be authorized to do trade-offs that you were appointed by the court? And that, it, that seems to be the way the Rishonim go. It was the fact the court appoints you, that gives you special authority. And obviously the parallel by, the, by Eretz Yisrael was, well, God appointed you, right? God said, there's going to be a Nazi there that's going to divide. So you see that from there we learn a model that at least a court-appointed you know, uh, representative 
trustee can have the power to make these types of trade-offs on behalf of the people that he is made the trustee of. But it's not part of the general principle of shlichos. It's not even part of the general principle of zochim. Yes. Peshita, a trustee has to make this kind of decision. Obviously. Otherwise, it's not really a... Obviously. Well, correct. And that's actually, that's going to take a look, because now we're going to spend a little time on this. If miners come to divide the father's estate, a Basin will uh, appoint for them a apotropis, and they will choose out for them a good portion, and each one will try to sort of determine like the best uh, division, okay? Um, so, um, so Rashi says, They try to do, you know, give the best, you know, to do good by everybody. Of course, another way to understand this, right, is, you know, I think there's a question here of the gear sub. Um, anyway, no, but anyway, but, um, um, but the question is, one minute. Okay, no, something else. Anyway, okay, let's keep on going because you could imagine a different system. You could imagine a system that each miner gets an apitropis and each apitropis fights for the interests of his mine of his, you know, representee. Represent Right, representee, right? So therefore, by each one being an advocate for the person they're representing, that will lead to the fairest division, right? As opposed to the way that this sounds, like you have one representative, one trustee, who tries to be fair and equal distribution to everybody that he is in that he that is under his charge, okay? So, but let's say, now that they've grown up, they can protest, and they can say, you know, I'm not happy with the portion that you uh, gave to me. I want to do a redivision of the assets. Of course, just imagine how disastrous that would be in terms of trying to like, you know, here they are, they're 12 years, they, you know, they're a whole group of them. You divide up the estate so everybody can get on with their lives. And 10 years later, one of them now becomes bar mitzvah and he wants to reverse the whole division. Oh, I don't like the portion you got from me. Okay, so that's what Rav Nachman comes in. The Gemara says, Rav Nachman Diteyam, and Rav Nachman in his own name says, um, No, they cannot protest after they've grown up. Because if you don't say that, where's the power of Bastin? Right, the whole thing is that they've been appointed by Bastin, and the authority of Bastin, meaning A, just practically would undermine, you know, would be counterproductive at a societal level, but he's also saying, like, it makes a mockery of oh. Bastin's, uh, of, of what it means to be a court appointee. <laughs> if I've been given the authority of the court, and then that can be reversed 10 years later. No, if you're backed by the authority of the court, that means even if the miners don't like it when they grow up, it's still binding. Now, by the way, the principle of that you could be mocha is relevant in a normal case of zachin. Okay, the example I've used in the past is, you know, Dove is 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 uh, wants to get rid of his uh, old Ferrari. It's two years old. He's time to trade it in. So he loves the Shtaf Yomi so much that he's going to give it over there to David to take possession for me because I'm not around. Okay, mm -hmm. so he gives David the car keys. He's now with zachin lot and he's taking possession for me. And David comes and says, Rabbi Linzer, here's this gift. <laughs> Okay, you say, what, me? I don't want gifts. I do it all lishma. Okay, so now at that stage, it's not like I own it and I have to be mafkir. You did it on my behalf. Once I'm brought into the equation and I make it clear that that was not on my behalf, I wouldn't have wanted it, it doesn't work. Okay, that's what mecha is. You did a zacha mm -hmm. zuchia shalom fun of on the presumption that it was on my behalf. Then you inform me of it, and I say that wasn't on my behalf. <laughs> by the way, that also works. Bill mentioned before the issue about zachin by geiris of a katan when you're megayer somebody who's a who's a minor. Okay, and then the person becomes bar bat mitzvah. <laughs> and now they're an adult. They can actually say at that age, you know what? I don't want to be Jewish. And you only did this because you were representing my interests. I don't want to be Jewish. And retroactively, they're not Jewish. And the gay doesn't work. So once somebody is now present, either they were just physically distant or they're now an adult, they can actually say you were not operating on my behalf. So Rav Nachman says you can't say that when it was a court appointed trustee, A, because it would be disastrous in terms of practical, but also B, because it undermines the authority of the court. The authority of the court is great enough that it overrides even a future objection. Okay, but now the Gemara says one minute. So the Gemara says, So what does Rav Nachman really hold up? That like you can't override a court, a court that's like, you know, that, that, that we're concerned about the power and authority of the court and we won't let it be overridden later. 
let's say the court has to come and assess the value of property to allow a creditor to seize property not in the presence of the debtor. The debtor is off and he's run away and I want to take possession of his property and the court will now assess the value and I'll take possession of his property. Let's say their assessed value was greater or less than a sixth of the actual value of the property. Now that's a normal amount that uh, under normal circumstances, if it was an oral transaction, would be a big enough discrepancy that the sale would be but that. Okay, so if I overpaid you or underpaid you more than a sixth, the sale is but that. Let's say the court's assessment, okay, was a sixth higher or a sixth lower than its actual value. Then the, take the sale that they did to pay off the creditors is null and void. Nope, the sale is still legitimate. The court did it. We it has its own parameters. If the court does it, it's binding regardless. Okay. Um came, my court based in Yafa. Because if you wouldn't say that, then what good is the power of based in? So even if they were way off in their assessment, the sale is still valid. Okay, that's fine. But then the same Rav Nachman who said by the by the orphans here says we rule like the Chachamim that the sale is void. So what's your story, Rav Nachman? If the court does something, does it can it get null, can it get nullified or not nullified? By the orphans you say it's not voided. Here you say it is voided. What's the difference? So the one says low cash. That's not difficult. Hadato hadaloto. In one case, they made a mistake. They were off by a significant amount of the value, and therefore it's void. So the the power of the court does not include cases where they significantly err, where, where there's a real error. Okay, but in the case by the orphans growing up, they didn't make an error. So the Gemara says, "Idoloto ma'icholim limchos." If they didn't make an error, then what's the orphan complaining about? So no, yicholim limchos beruchos. He can still complain. He could say, "I wanted the north field and not the east field." You know, and I have the following reasons. There's reasons I prefer this. It's not an objective error. It's a preference. Okay, so maybe there's three possibilities. You don't overwrite. The court's acts are never voided, even in the case of an error. They're voided in the case of an error, but not in the case where the person they were representing just wasn't happy. Okay, and the third case is that even if the person just wasn't happy, they're voided. So Rav Nachman is the middle position. You're not happy. You had a different preference. Tough luck. It was the court did it. Okay, but if it was a real error, that's a different story. Now we continue. I'm Rav Nachman, so we're still going to keep in this vein for a bit. Now, let's say it's not a court. Let's say we have brothers dividing an estate. Okay, it follows the same rules as normal buying and selling. What does that mean? Purchasers. Pachos mishtos, if after they'd made the division, they realized that one person, that they were not exactly equal portions, you know, and that some of the, your your section of the estate was actually uh, worth a little bit more than mine. If the difference was less than a sixth of the value, nikna mecca, then that doesn't affect the, the, the division of the estate. The same way if I sold you something and I was off by more, by, by less than a sixth, in either direction, it's still valid. Okay, a little overcharged, a little undercharged, it's still valid. Okay, yes, Rostos, let's say your portion was more than a sixth, more than mine, or less than mine. Okay, so but Mecca, the same way if in a transaction I over or undercharge you by more than a sixth, the sale was void, here too the division is void. Shtus, if I exactly one sixth overcharge or undercharge, Kone, the sale was valid, but umachzir ona, you have to pay back the difference. Okay, so you would apply exactly that by a division of an estate. So if I, if, if your portion was less than a sixth more than mine, it's valid. More than a sixth more than mine, it's voided. We do the whole thing again. Exactly a sixth more or less, whatever, because always the direction than mine, then the division is valid, but you have to pay me the difference of, of the two. Let, let, let's just move a little bit. Okay, so the Mary says, um, I'm a Rafa. Had the Amen, that which he said, Pokus Mishtos Nemekov, that if it's less than a six, it's valid by an estate. Okay, well, Amen El Loshav Yashaliyah. That's only when the person who was dividing the estate, you know, you were divide, you, you know, you chose your portion and your brother chose his portion. But if you made a agent to represent you in the negotiations, and this agent was off, you know, did not make an exact fair division and you know you know you got less than a six you got yours was a little less than somebody else's then you could say you know you were my agent to represent my benefit my interests not to hurt me so as we've pointed out before this just becomes absurd 
If I basically am going to get into a negotiation with somebody, if you know anything, you just make an agent to represent you. And then if, 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 if after the fact you find out that he could have gotten a better deal, then you just void the whole thing because you're going to say, well, the agent was there to be for, for my benefit and not for my, you know, and not, and not to hurt my interest. So here what it says is if your agent, I don't know the answer to that, but if you had an agent representing you in the negotiation of dividing the estate, okay, then, um, then if the agent got your portion was worth a little bit less than your brother's portion, then you can either void the sale or maybe at least get the difference back from your brother. Because you could say he wasn't my agent to, to, to harm me. He was only my agent for my benefit. Okay, that's number one. Again, then if that's true, everybody should make an agent. Anyway, number two, number one. Number two, the Hada Amin Yesim Yishtuz Patel Mekach, that which we say if it's off by more than a sixth, if the whole sale is void, that's only now actually Tosis's Girsa is I'm gonna read it by Tosis's Girsa. Tosis's Girsa is Hada Amrin, if it's uh, if it's Shtus, it is uh let me just double check that I got the Girsa right. Hold on. Um right. That right, right. Tosis says it's the order. Less than a six, a six, more than a six. Okay, so I'm gonna read it Tosis's way. Tosis's way is that which we said that if it's exactly a six, it's valid and you give back the difference. Okay, not bottle It's valid and you give back the difference. No amrin amrin Only if you didn't say, let's divide it based on the way the court would assess the value. Of our niflo If you said let our division be like a division of a court. Okay, what would that mean? Okay, um, that is, uh, where were we? Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, the Beidina Mechren Kayin. Then it would be valid even, I mean, and you wouldn't have to give back the difference. Okay, those are the readings that it was exactly a sixth. That we, before we taught you give back the difference. But if you said, let's treat it like a division of the court, then you don't have to give back the difference. How do you know? That none. Shuma de Yan Shapirsu Shtus or Tirishtus, Mechren Bata. So Shimlil said that it's valid. Okay. And we so hold on, I'm just now I'm confused again. One more second. Right, right. Meaning if you said like it's a Bastin's division, it's a little up. I'm sorry if I'm just confusing things. But anyway, I'm trying to read it like Tosis. I'm not sure I'm doing us any good. Okay, but anyway, okay, but by the Bastin, like the Tanakama, the Tanakama says that if it's a sixth more or less. The sale is void, right? So let's be okay. You know what? Let's try Rashi because it's the gears that everybody has in front of you, and I'm getting confused reading toasters. Okay, let's try it again with Rashi. Okay, because there's problems with Rashi as well. But anyway, let's go back. I'll go back to the little bet in parentheses. That's what he said that it's more than a sixth, the sale is void. That's only if you didn't say let's treat it like the like a division of Bastin. If you said let it be like a division of Bastin, Mechren Kayan, then it would be valid. Okay, how would it be valid? Is it not Shuma Dayan, it would not be void because we teach Shuma Dayan, Shapir Shu Shu if they're off. Mechren Batel, okay, well, that's consistent. It is Batel. But Rabbi Shimon Gamliel Omer, Mechren Kayim. And presumably, Rashi says here, we're following Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. So if you say, if you say that according to Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, even when Bastin makes a mistake in the division, it's still valid. And if you said, let it be like a Bastin division, then it would be valid, even if they were off more by more than a sixth. Okay, Vahadam and Shtus Kana Machzirona, and that would be say when if it's a sixth, it's good, but you have to give back the difference. Well, I'm an elebi metaltoli. That's only by chattel. Of a makarke, but if it's by land, ain't on all the carcos, then it then it wouldn't matter. Even if you're way off, um, it would still be valid. Okay. So now basically, let's just break this on because I'm getting a little bit confused. Okay, we have three cases. We have if it's less than a six, it's good. If we have it more, did I get that right? Less than a six, it's good. More than a six, it's Botel. And one six, it is good. And pay back the difference. Okay, that's the normal principle by normal purchase. And that's the principle we're saying by dividing an estate. But now we qualify, okay? When do we say that this is good? That's only if, but if it's a shaliach, then it's void. Because you could say, I made my shaliach only for my benefit. I'm not happy with the fact that it wasn't a perfect division. That would be say that if it's more than a six, it's Batel, 
but if you said, because it should be but, but if you said that it's a, what do you call it? If you said, let's do it like a based in, like a based in, then we say it's Kaya, it's good. That's like what Shimon Gamliel, who says, Makoach based in, Inke Makoach based in Yafa. That, the, that by based in something is always going to be good. And if you said, let's make it like a based in, then it will be good. And when we say exactly a sixth, you pay back the difference. That's only if it's chattel. But if it's karka, then we say it's always good because there it's because there's no ona, there's no sense of overcharging by land because maybe have, somewhat because it's categorically excluded and somewhat because uh, you know it's it's um you know it's always very hard to exactly assess the value of land. Okay, now by the way, that's a huge exclusion yeah. because most of the division we normally imagine oh, that would be by yeah. karka. And this makes this whole thing relevant only by chattel, not by karka. So one of the issues that Tosos questions is maybe is Rashi saying the normal sense is that karka is always good, even if there's like way off, even if it's like double off, it would still be good. But since Rashi's read is if it's a sixth, that's when karka makes a difference. Maybe according to Rashi, if it's off by more than a sixth, maybe even by karka it would be no good. Okay, so how much is karka excluded from the laws of Ona'a? Rashi quotes a puzzle. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Let's read a little bit more. So the Gemara says like this: um, okay. By karka, when we do say that even by karka is excluded from the laws of Onan, you don't have to pay back the difference. That's only if the error was made in assessing the dollar value of a mishkasa. But if the error was made in measuring the land, low. Meaning basically it was like, it's all farmland, it all has the same value, everybody's going to get 30 acres, okay? And then we realized, oh, by the way, when we drew the line, we made, it, we made a mistake. We drew the line over here, you only got 28 acres and you got 32 acres. There you don't say, ain't on the karka. Ain't on the karka means overcharging. The dollar value assessed was off. That was a simple question of, you know, of, of, of measuring. Okay, um, to the kid of like rabbi, the Amar Rabba, Kol Dava Sheva, Nidava Sheva, Mishka, Sheva, Minyan, anything that's about to be measured, right? If basically you know you're selling a, a you know a dozen eggs for 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 a dollar and I got 11 or I got 13, you don't say, well, more than a six, less than a six. You know, that was just the number was off, that wasn't the the the, the assessment of it was off, the price was off. A few pachos michte or not, Nami Choser would also go back. Okay, so we will, I guess, end here, and then tomorrow on uh, Yantiv, we'll pick up with the whole issue about Shaliyach Litvar Avera. Yes, we have to figure out the uh, timing. I realize I did not work out the timing.